Welcome back, everyone, to Seed Story Cup Day 2. We've already had uh, two matches happen today. Uh, we have the winner's match coming right up. We have Elki versus Oskaka. Now, Oskaka was saying that um, he had no chance to, to lose at all, but we'll see if that's the case. I like the uh, confidence. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. crazy. So That's uh, optimistic. This is a Hearthstone. <laughs> right. I mean, Oskaka's good. He's really good. But... But he's playing Hearthstone. Yeah. I mean, so. he recently just got a, you know, a, a pretty... Good win with being the world champion. That's, that's, that's not bad, right? It has to even worst. out. Yeah. It has to even out at some point. Yeah. Right? That, uh, it oh. might, might work against Hell Key. So. Okay. We'll see. Anyway, that being said, guys, uh, in case you don't know these uh, gentlemen, this is Ryzen from uh, Complexity, and this is Zelay from... Uh, I think everybody pretty much knows who you play for at this point. Archon. I'm the kind of a big deal. Hmm? The deck doctor. You're kind of a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So um, tell me more about Fatigue Warrior. Oh god, it's really not good against Paladin. It's, it's not a, working. It out. is a bad time. What are the, it's, what are the good matchups for a uh, fatigue warrior? Uh, Priest is a great time. Uh, okay. Other warriors tend to beat him up, stuff like that. So yeah, I mean, you you would probably beat uh, Control Warrior with it. Yeah, and I think you do well yeah. against Agro Druid. Mid range Druid is a little harder. Um, so anything that doesn't go smork. Yeah, you don't you don't want to get hit in the face. That's bad. Okay. That's bad. I mean, I've got to I've got to wonder though if we're gonna see more of it uh, in the future because the metagame might slow down as a result of like crazy cards like. Uh, you know, Reno Jackson and whatnot. I'd like to see it. You, you think Reno... Ooh. We're, all right, we're all getting... We kept Backstab, Phantom Knives, and Juggler. Oh, Rogue! Yeah, you, uh, right yes. is... Uh, like, your favorite class, I know, is Rogue. So you're going to be guiding true. us through the misplays uh, that are being made here by Oskaka, if any. I mean, uh, okay. there's not a lot of players that I pin on playing Rogue, but Oskaka got added to that list. Um, yeah, oh no, he's There's definitely, very few players that do it, but he does it well. Yeah. He's definitely just... He's just a, a well-rounded Hearthstone player in general. He just knows how to... Do we yeah. each play very effectively? Now, this is risky, right? Because the potential Coin SI7 agent. Yeah, Backstab, no Viscerate, Coin SI, there's way too many answers. Coin SI is the big one. Yeah, that's Coin SI is the dream. And uh, speaking of answers, dream. I mean, he's got uh, Backstab for the Juggler, he's got Fan of Knives for the Muster. And this is probably the reason why Rogue is being played now, is because mm -hmm. you have, like, every single play that a Paladin has is usually being answered by one of your own, like, a single one of your own. Yep. So. Yeah. Sap is a good answer against Dr. Six. Right. Well, yeah. uh, you just kind of negate it. Yeah. So you trigger with a weapon very... It's cheap, because you yeah. probably maybe already have it from a previous turn. Um, so Rogue kept Phantom Knives off the mulligan, and this is why Muster for yeah. Battle in particular. Exactly it's generally why. good in the matchup, but in particular against Muster for Battle. Uh, they get a 1-4 weapon, and you get a card that's... Yeah. I mean, uh, the thing is, it, like, the weapon is useful, but against Rogue, it tends not to do very much. Right, well, you'll want to use True Silver Champion as a, as a weapon for removal, because usually the 1-3 just doesn't do much. Yeah. All uh, right, so okay. maybe there's a, an argument here for uh, Deadly Poisoning. Into a Farseer? Um, it depends where he comes out of the Shredder, I think. Oh, he's it looks like he's going for it. And yeah, trading into Shredder feels bad. Yeah. But... You do what you gotta do, it's Hearthstone. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. I think you still play the Farseer here. I mean, you you're coin Shredder to try and trade. convince him to not trade, and right. that way you can potentially set up a better flurry. Because mm. the Farseer, um, more worried about him trading. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you are giving it, but you did get. I mean, it's not a two for one because the, the deadly poison is effectively going to give you the added value to where I think you might even come out ahead on the exchange uh, mm -hmm. over, like, with your next kill. Um, and you also have a flurry, as you said, that's actually really solid with the, uh, with the blood mage Thaldos. So we were talking about bringing Rogue because of Paladin. Uh, right. One reason Rogue's historically favorable in the matchup is if you look at the hero powers, how they line up, uh, if the Rogue hero powers once and the Paladin hero powers twice, they, they trade all that stuff. At the end of it, the Rogue uh, lost two life and pulled ahead by two mana. And that's, yeah. that's extremely favorable. Mm -hmm. yeah. Two life is worth nowhere near as much as two mana in the early game. And the tempo, the that's a really big deal. Is tempo is really important, yeah. and this is kind of the, yeah. the best way to get it. Um, all right. Man, that little tip is, uh, I mean, it feels like it's coming down a bit early, but with a curve like this, you know, you picked up Mysterious Challenger with Dr. Boom, you really can't, like, you, you can't hope for a better 5 drop at this stage, pretty much. I mean, yeah. even Belcher is kind of worse in this case. I mean, I call little tip Dr. 5. We got Dr. 5, Dr. 6, Dr. 7, we're doing it. And Dr. Yeah. 8 might come up as well. Yeah, we got time, yeah. I believe. The thing is, we need to find a Dr. 9. Like, we're still waiting for that other... It's you, Sarah, I think. Some people say Alex Strasza. Would it be? Um, okay. Well, what does Ryzen think? I mean, you play Rogue a lot more. Would it be a new Barak? <laughs> I mean, Ysera was what I was thinking as well. I can't okay. really think of anything else. Alex Straza is better in the Alex decks Traza's where you like build around. Like, Freeze Mage, Alex Straza is very clearly Dr. Nine. Yeah. Like, Ysera in Ysera decks not as good as Alex Straza in Alex Straza decks. It's sad. It's true. Yeah, we're just waiting for the ultimate nine drop. I think it would have... Uh, Wait, it might be the new guy. Down this turn instead uh, to the get Arc some cycle. Thief. 
Could be that. Like the 7 8. What, what, what does that do? No. It's a 7 8 that gives you a 10 cost spell that just, you, you, you didn't see oh, that. Oh, the artifact, right? Oh. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. artifact. Oh, okay, it's a okay. plus 10, plus yeah, 10. Yeah. <laughs> there's a three uh, patron, there's a patron board thing. And yeah, then there's a. Um, the 10 damage arcane missile yeah. that just doesn't do much. Yeah, it could, it could uh, replace uh, Isera in control warrior decks. All right, so know. four secrets for Elki. I think he's not playing Repentance if memory serves. Uh, I, I haven't seen it at all. Exactly. Uh, stocking the candy cane. Not a full tree. Yeah, we didn't see Repentance in the Erectful match, so I don't okay. think he's playing Repentance. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's a bit clunky, but you have the, like, you have the clear if you, if you really want it. It's just kind of inefficient. What are, are we attacking with the Shredder first to proc the stuff, and then we're doing something like Thalnos Flurry, or...? Yeah, I mean, Thalnos Flurry would make it so oh, you do a 7 flurry? damage AoE. You want, a, uh, you want a full clear. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oil Flurry doesn't even clear the entire board, unfortunately. That's kind of the problem. Like, if, if the 6-6 uh, if the, if the six, six gets buffed, you're not clearing everything. If the 5-5 five, five gets buffed, you are. With, no, uh, he's still not a, even if the... the uh, because he doesn't have, doesn't oh, have you, enough mana yeah, to Yeah, you have to wait one turn to, yeah. to pull it off. So it's just pretty awkward right now. Yeah, yeah. No he, matter what, you're will, gonna he, will he overdraw if he coin sprints? Like this hand is really looking bad. He might have to just go for some draw here and find a prep, find something. Prep sap would be decent. That's the way it goes with Rogue. Like sometimes your plays aren't good, and you're like, all right, I guess I'll just draw and figure it out later. Yeah, yeah. You take some hurting in the meantime, but you gotta gotta do something. Okay. All right, he's gonna clear he's the two good. minions. Does it he's clear, not though? gonna trigger the secrets. Yeah, he it does clear um, a good chunk of the board, and you're not really letting anything else. Uh, bother you. This is the only minion that's up there. Yay. It's pretty hard. Yeah. It's a lot it's of damage. <laughs> oh, man. Blessed champion. Cog hammer, blessing of kings. Jeez. Yeah, it's a lot of damage. Or just but, drop the boom. Yeah, I was going to say drop the, like the boom. <laughs> boom. <laughs> boom. <laughs> I forgot, the number one rune of Hearthstone. If you have seven mana, yeah, you the boom. Yeah, if you're not dead on the spot, it's probably a good play. Yeah. Oh, Avenge is a bad draw. It makes this mysterious challenger worse. It's about, it makes the challenger worse, but ultimately at this point, uh, you probably won't even need it. I mean, you could basically use your weapon, unless the rogue's popping something like a healbot uh, sap, yeah. then you're probably going to be able to keep going uh, and just win the game that way. Yeah. Um, I mean, we've seen some pretty nasty boom bots earlier today from Oskaka. So, so the, Elki was actually saying this, by the way, before the game started. He said, uh, I'm gonna, I play decks that are somewhat easy to play because right. I think I have, like, I'm getting out-skilled in tournament in general. Okay. If I'm up against, you know, Oskaka, I don't want to be playing Freeze Mage against Freeze Mage because he's obviously a lot more uh, knowledgeable about it. Right. That's just good that decision making. I mean, like, you got to know these guys have put more time in than me. I'm still catching up. Yep. I'm going to do what, do what gives me the best odds. Mm -hmm. I like it. I like to hear that. Be realistic about you know, your circumstance. It's not RNG still, right? Not completely. So, Shredder into a 9-4 sounds pretty good. Yeah. Ryzen, like, what will you do here? I feel like there's almost you no You gotta keep play. drawing cards, man. Hey, that's it? <laughs> you gotta keep drawing cards. You gotta get some answers. Oh, that's, that's one piece of there's it. There's one. All right, two pieces. That's, he can he can still live here. What, what is the secret? That's um, Noble Sack, I think. No, he, he proc... Oh, it no, is Noble Sack. Oh, not, so he can't uh, kill the Lothab with the Shredder. That's a big deal. Yeah, he's gonna oh. have to rely on... He can use on. his dagger to eat the Noble Sack and then... And then coin sap the, um, the, the boom. boom. Boy, this feels bad. So we're going down <laughs> to six case and staring down two boom bots. Yeah. Well, something really good might come out of the shredder. Like we, we haven't talked about that. Vitality like, totem. There's like five taunts in the in the totem. Tron. That's not the not worst. Not a vitality totem, but it gives us some heal. It's got four toughness and it potentially heals. We might somehow put an oil on that. Well, the game is over, so... Oh. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, we Radio. might be able to do X or Y. No, there's no, there's no future for us. Uh, for Oska like, from his perspective, though, Oskaka is probably hoping that there's no kings, no true silver. Um, yeah. Then maybe he'd be able to stay alive. But the Boombas alone, you know, if you trade both of them, uh, there's potential for a little bit more damage than they, they're recovering from the yeah. attack. The you see that micro? He conceded quick. Yeah, <laughs> I'm good at that, too. It's just that I don't end up... Like, I have to do it pretty much... 75% of the time, whereas he doesn't oh. do it as often. Yeah, so. yeah. So what happened that game is Oskaka had both his sprints like in his first 15 yeah. cards. You, you really don't want that against Paladin, or just most matches in general. So it's Too slow. Yeah, too slow. Too slow. Yeah. Paladin had a you good curve. Saps. He went... Yeah. I, don't, I don't remember the early game, but he had like 5, 6, 7. It was all just the yeah. good ones. I mean, Paladin's always yeah. got a good curve. You kind, of, you kind of expect it, though, at this stage. Uther right? has like, good like, curves. Yeah, he's got better curves than Jaina. Who really? Yeah. How about Valera? I think Valera has the best curves. No? Have you seen the, I mean, honestly, have you seen at this the point, Valera poster? Just, yes, I have. Um, but here's the problem I've got with this Craig game. I don't see enough trolls and undead in my hero list. Oh. Like, where are they? 
How, how did they design a game without those classes? I mean, those races. I don't know. I'm waiting. I didn't play enough WoW to... to it doesn't matter. You're like, just Warcraft 3, man. All right, so we're queuing Druid into Paladin. That's our best bet. Does that mean it's an aggro Druid? Yeah. It oh, man. Oh, man. Mm. This is a, the, the only time you're ever going to use Innervate early game is aggro Druid. Like, not early game, but you don't have any Ancients of Lore to get to. So ramping up a Shredder is probably the best thing you could ever do. The Paladin Mulligan is pretty interesting. It's what was nice throwing? I, I didn't see it. I just saw the... Oh, the OP start? Yeah. Oh, it's doing some good stuff over there. Emotes are coming out. The we need more emotes, man. I, I have not seen enough emotes in this tournament yet. I want, we need I want more them emotes. To say. <laughs> I'm gonna, that's all I'm going to do. Uh, that's all I'm going to do in tournament. Uh, I'm just going to emote. But like, they, they're kind of stale, though, because like you, we've been spamming them for two years, uh -huh. and uh, they haven't sold us, you know, microtransaction emote <laughs> packs yet. Okay. With like really cool super you know, BM. Right. Yeah. You know, super cool things. You can even have like a Ben Bro laugh. As, we like, need your ha -ha -ha. welcome. Oh, I would love that. They, they, they do the thanks. You need your welcome to counter. Yeah, it. exactly. They need to work on some of those. By the way, Blizzard, uh, if you're monetizing this, I'd like a 10% cut. Oh, there you go. Optimism. <laughs> okay, I'd like a 1% cut, and I can still like, retire and live off of it. For Listen, the I'm, I'm a fair business partner. I'll take a 0.01%. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. You're supposed to innervate the Keeper on oh, turn two. that's a good top deck. Oh, that's a good it is deck. turn three. It is. <laughs> nice uh, observational skills right there, Zalei. Do you think we're getting uh, Bluegill Warrior? I think so. That would be amazing. Right, what would be better than that, though, besides Millhouse? Well, I was about to pose that question. Millhouse is probably better than Bluegill, right? He could get juggled, though. It could be worse. I'll take that. Yeah. I'll take that. It trades with um, the, uh, the juggler. Yeah. Doesn't and really die easily. Although, uh, Aldo Peacekeeper for Tempo looks really appealing. Uh, I mean, Minibot Competitive Spirit also mm. looks pretty sweet. I think you want to save nah. Aldo for something more um, big. Yeah, more, more threatening. Minibot competitive spirit, like the 3 2 trades into your juggler, and your competitive spirit's going off on one minion. Yeah, with the minibot? Yeah. Mm. I mean, there's a chance you overkill, but what if you just, the like, Aldor and don't attack? You force it, like, if there's a keeper, you're getting really punished, so you kind of have, have to, to get attack. the value now. Yeah. Yeah. There's no downside, there's no upside to not attacking, is right. there? Well, like, you're forcing if, a shade trade, but he's going to hero power. If he hero powers, then I guess it's good. Like right. you use the one two and the hero power, so you're denying him the tempo of a four drop. Okay. But if he's got okay. a four drop, you get blown out of the water like every time. Uh -huh. Maybe Aldor is the best play here. Yeah, I like the Aldor. Yeah. Like yeah, Aldor can be better against the bigger minion later, but uh, so much of Hearthstone is just getting ahead on board now to right. snowball right. your advantage exactly. over the following turn. Especially if against like aggro versus aggro. Yeah. Sorry. That's that's one thing that took me a while to adjust, like coming from Magic to Hearthstone. It's not waiting, right? Yeah, not waiting. Just creatures. do just do whatever now. Oh, oh, that, that's that, gonna be good. Yeah. I mean, Aldor card. Peacekeeper was just played, so that's that true. Yeah. Reaver, like, is the only thing you're really happy to Aldor against uh, Agro Druid, and if you don't have it anymore, then you're relying on Noble Sacrifice carrying you, which very often is a problem for Fell Reaver because you end up having to like on turn six Hero Power, and yeah. then play it. the six six is still up, so everything is really big, and they can maybe play a few cheap spells as a follow up, and then your Fell Reaver mills half your deck. Um, but Aldor is the card that wins automatically. Paladin's yeah, really bad at, at punishing Fel Reaver, yeah. like apart from Aldor, just because they don't have card draw and they don't have that many cheap things. There are a lot of just playing the right biggest minion on curve, and so when you're burning three of your opponent's cards a turn, the 8 8's going to kill you way before that's relevant. Right, just exactly. Every time. Yeah. You mill a bit. Like, the, the best it does is give you info about what's not there anymore, but aside from that, it doesn't like put you ahead at all. It gives both people info. Right? Like,. I mean, Both the player plays Fel attack Reaver. with the shade. Wow. They get information about what's left in their deck. They know what outs they're playing to. Right, better. exactly. Like they know uh, what they're playing out. Ooh, monster for battle with juggler. I'm not Ooh. sure. And it, the shade it gets better than this. It's gonna hit three on the shade. Do you wow, think so? Wow, that's, uh, <laughs> that's gonna do it. That's, that's one in three to the third power. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's one in twenty-seven. Uh, yeah, one in twenty-seven. Okay, nah, failed. Dang it. Yeah, you're not very good. My math guys. was a little off. Right. Well, you did get it. Uh, a, you know, a third of the hits went where you said they would. Mm. So this is, this is a much better board for competitive spirit, right? I'm kind of surprised we didn't trade Shade into Juggler last turn. Like, it feels bad, but... Yeah. I thought I was doing it. Oh, good enough. Oh. Now, competitive spirit is really solid here because there's no swipe, and the incentive is there to play Fell Reaver. I don't know if Oskaka watched the last match and he knows there's no Repentance. If he doesn't, he might be, you know, very scared of playing the Fell Reaver. I wouldn't play around Repentance, like, almost ever, just because, like, it's a one-of, there's a whole bunch of secrets they could randomly be drawing, like... Yeah. 
Right. You have to have a really strong read on them to start thinking about playing around Repentance. And in this case, there's just no option. Yeah, I mean, okay. if, you, if you know, right? Like, if you just Kaka anyway and you know there's no Repentance, then it's even easier yeah. to pull off. But now there's a trade with a Fell Reaver if he wants it. We, we said that he had no Bend good answers, and he has a pretty good one. He's trading two leftover minions from Muster for Battle. That's not bad. What about, uh, what if we go face? Is there any chance we can, like, assume the role of the aggressor, or does that make no sense? So there's 12 damage on the board, 13 maybe. with Savage Roar, he's going up. Yeah. Maybe if he had, uh, maybe a True Silver in his hand, some more damage in his hand for the next phase. Yeah. It's tempting to go face because, like, you're attacking now, he's at 24, you're at 30, but it's wrong because if you look at the context of your hand, you have uh, oh. big, slow minions in hand as the Paladin, and also the Druid could potentially have cards like Force Nature, right. Savage Roar, which he actually does have, which say, oh, I want to race, not. Yeah. Not play for board, but as you you know you did uh, you brought it you brought it up and Smart. now that you mention it I feel like it's possibly right. Force is gonna just clean up the board yeah. completely. Bench. Now how does the damage get dealt from the paladin to the druid? That's fine. It's all right. Um, yeah, you can trade the shade into that and go face with the fairy afterwards. Like you kill the two twos, kill trade the shade and go face for eight. So and then challenger really really punishes you. Yeah. As Druid, we're looking to set up a board that's stable enough that we can play Boom on 7 and then try and win on 8 with Savage Roar. Mm -hmm. So if we're trading into the 2-2s, two it means we're trading into that 5-4 with what? One of our other minions. Otherwise, you would have traded into the 5-4s. Right. I mean, yeah. you could use the, the, the Fell Reaver. The thing is, Consecration really punishes you if, if it's there. Um, so if you use the Shade, this is you're a keeping trade a very... Right here. Yeah, exactly. You're a keeping a big 8-8. The space for that one. Okay. Kings is the only thing Made that the could... Most uh, I lean towards doing it the other way, where I trade with the Fell Reaver and go face the Shade. And risk mm -hmm. Consecration, but that's it? Yeah, I mean, Consecration's like a one-of, usually. Yeah. And you have Dr. Boom to follow it up with, so you're still gonna get the initiative back. And, like, we're going to the Doctor Six turn, where having two minions on board quite a bit better than one, because of Noble Sacrifice. This kind is getting pretty low here. Yeah, and the, and the thing is, uh, the Keeper of the Grove, like, assuming Avenge somehow ends up on the Minibot, that's gonna be a really big deal. So we're just not able to play Dr. Boom, sad face. It's like, on 7. Too far behind. The only reason you wouldn't play Dr. Boom on 7 is because Dr. 6 was played on 6. <laughs> <laughs> is that the true counter, Dr. Boom? Yeah. I mean, I, the, the Sacred Trial is a decent counter to it. Oh, the new pout? I don't even want to. Yeah, because the Boom Bots come in first. They actually gave them a new secret. Yeah, know. and it kills Dr. Boom. Yeah. So we were, we were talking about a few turns back about whether you trade into that Fell Reaver go face. And Ooh, going that's face. a good avenge target, because then I can trade. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, it's all in the one basket, basically. It, it works out. Yeah. It works out for... Uh, it's not a bad clear here for him. Going face a few turns back really worked out, because it meant that the Druid did not have enough life total to safely to play. Yeah, that was a great call. Yeah, pressure. I think you're right. Like, yeah. It was only going to get punished by crazy sweeps, like an innervate, swipe, swipe, but like, what are the odds? Mm -hmm. All right, everything to face here. Pulling the weapon just in case you draw a truce over. Man, Dr. Boom, that's GG. And Elki's wow. going to give it up. 2-0. Uh, I mean, Oskaka is going to give it up to Elki. 2-0. Elki. Yeah. Um, wow. For a guy who was supposed to lose 100% of the time, I think he's doing pretty good. <laughs> yeah, not yeah, bad. Pretty sweet. Wow. Well, that's I, I, I will say I'm, I'm a bit surprised, but um, I did want to mention this earlier. Uh, we saw Elki banned Mage, which yeah. we know uh, Skaka's playing Freeze Mage. And I believe Freeze Mage is strong against three of Elki's decks. His Paladin, his Zoo, and, and the Diagro Druids. His, um, uh, another deck. No, no. no? So, that was a good ban. Nice yeah. I mean, I, you have to wonder, though, because Oskaka's lineup, uh, he aims, I think, to ban um, just Warriors, from what I've seen from his deck. Like, everything he plays just gets really countered by Warrior. Ooh. So, Patron. Against the Paladin. So, so th how order. is this matchup? I know you play some patrons. Yeah. So like, how is this matchup? Well, I'd rather be the patron for sure, obviously. Okay. But it's not like it's not like a blowout. Uh, right. Pa Paladin has a lot of good cards. You know. That's very true. <laughs> Doctors one through eight. Doctor get to Paladin, work, right? Yeah. Um, I feel like the the new patron. The only reason it's not as good as the old one against Paladin has to do with the fact that you're never getting a guaranteed clear by playing stuff. Uh, like back back when you played the old patron, you always had a turn where you just turned the table and just like flipped it uh, and put your stuff there and theirs is gone. And they have like no clear in that deck because they don't want any quality. Whereas now, um, that early game is like you already you still have no early game and Shredder doesn't really add anything to the whole removal aspect of it. Okay. Yeah, I mean the simple way of putting it is just the patron got worse and Paladin got better. Like 
and also Paladin in particular with Mysterious Challenger. Now you're playing Repentance, which is actually a really good answer to Patron. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Repentance to Patron. Like, go ahead, Interage, Whirlwind. Good luck. Yeah, it's like when you hit Repentance on, uh, like, Warsong before the nerf even, like, it happens sometimes. Um, but now it's like, there's so few things that you're going to be running into with Repentance. I mean, that's probably the reason why a lot of people are cutting it. I've noticed that you see less Repentance. Competitive Spirit as well is kind of... Uh, yeah, it's usually one-offs like, now. Yeah, one exactly. Repentance usually Where, now. Whereas you had like nine secrets when the initial deck uh, iterations were made. Yeah. Like now you see more six to seven. Seven usually is kind of a sweet spot. We should talk about this. Oskaka just coined out Acolyte on three. Instead of playing War Axe and killing a Zombie Chow, a very appealing play. Yeah. And he values that card draw from the Acolyte so highly. Yeah, and you, uh, it's very, uh, I was going to say, like, it's very trade-up because you're guaranteed two cards. Yeah, when you play the Acolyte on three against Paladin, or on two against Paladin, when you coin it out, you're much more likely to get two cards. They have to have, like, Owl or something weird. Owl yeah. or something weird, right? Whereas if you <laughs> play it on, <laughs> yeah. Or if you play it on turn three, they can have, like, True Silver Kings. It's a lot easier for them to answer it without giving mm -hmm. you the extra card. Yeah, it's because the coin play on that, like, uh, because you have the coin, they, there's no way to have an answer by then. Juggler as well, something they might play on two. Um, if you play the Axe, you're able sometimes to get yourself, you know, the kill on the Juggler and follow it up with the Acolyte. Um, but then, turn four there. comes up. Whoop! All right, so... Another slight difference here is he is, like, fully curving out. He's using all three of his mana on turn three. Mm -hmm. um, and he got the full five heal off the Zombie Chow. If he just War Axe it on turn two, he's only healing for four. For four, yeah. This is like the minor value you have to think about because it's like it's not gonna play necessarily a really big role, but sometimes these little edges like they really, they really add up. Honestly, the yeah. stuff I just said is kind of unimportant. The real thing is the two draws the off Acolyte draw, yeah. without it getting answered in time. It's all co it's all kind of important though, because um, sure. it's by stacking up those little edges. Battle I mean, so you don't have two? you don't want to go out of your way to get all those, but battle rage for two here. Uh, it's tempting. I mean, do it's you not. just replay? Do you just play the other Acolyte instead? I mean, it'll depend on what, what comes out, out of the Shredder. I'd see what comes out from the Shredder first, yeah. I, I, it's an Armor Smith, Smith so... New, wrong class. Ah, uh, good enough. I mean, it draws <laughs> you more cards if you're, uh, if you're Oskaka here. You've got to be pretty happy. Yeah, that's true. So certainly the Acolyte's better than the Battle Rage here because of how it matches up against the Armor Smith, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. And also, like, uh, Battle Rage doesn't develop the board as well as Acolyte does, and you're... You're looking for board control to create a board state where you can make patrons without them just instantly dying to the opponent's board. Yeah, if it means you interrage your, uh, you know, your acolyte for a trade eventually, and then whirlwind only one patron, something like that might happen. Uh, if the acolyte lets you keep your patron safe, then it's worth it. Yep. Oh man, Elgi's like, do I really want to attack? Is it even relevant? Oh, I think you really want to. Uh, I mean, it makes Battle Rage less effective for one thing. You're only missing one face damage. Yeah. And as the Paladin here, you're, like, not very close to bum-rushing this patron. No. You're going to you're gonna have to stick around for a while to win this game. Yeah. And so I don't think exposing yourself to the risk... Like, it's easy to say when you can see the guy's hand, but uh, I think it also might be easy to say without seeing his hand. You, know, you want to miss that one damage. A lot of Oskaka. draws here for Oskaka. Yeah, like, he's getting the kill on the... He's defusing the bomb, and yeah. then he's able to draw two cards guaranteed out of the Acolyte unless something like Owl comes up. And he gets to play a you know Paladin Shredder if he wants one or Grim Page with Rage. That's good. Get in here. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Like consecration doesn't even address that. This is kind of back to the whole um, equality being gone from those decks gives them absolutely no way. That's yeah, why you put a Blood Mage Thanos in these Paladin decks, man. Oh man. <laughs> That's new meta game. <laughs> oh, Ryzen plays too much rogue. Yeah, I do. I remember right. somebody posting about, like, oh, I'm a 60-40 favorite against uh, Patron because I have an Azure Drake for my Consecration. 60-40? Like, <laughs> yeah, they're like, yeah, uh, yeah my, my mid-range pal is a favorite against Patron. I'm like, wow. no, 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 what? That, that, is, that is actually really funny, though. Well, I mean, that's, that's the way it goes when you get your testing from ladder instead of playing against competitive players. Uh, patron is just like an extreme, well, the old Patron was an extremely hard deck to play. Like, I made misplays constantly, and I practiced it more than a lot of people. Yeah. And, uh, and so... When you're playing against ladder players, they just play it terribly constantly. I mean, and, yeah, uh, that's uh, one of the big issues. Results. Like the obviously, you know, the results you're going to get from a given deck are going to differ based on who's piloting it, uh, which is the, the the big difference between ladder and tournament play, right? Mm -hmm. oh, I like this. Eat that noble sack with your three three patron. Get that battle rage going. Yeah. That execute is going to be sweet as well. It's going to cost you nothing. In fact, it will draw you stuff. Oskaka's well, having a good time here. Yeah. Make patrons, draw oh, so many cards. cards. Heard a der, we got the execute. Oh, heard a der. Yeah, we, literally. I wish we could hover over their decks to see how ahead uh, Oskaka is on cards. We even put Avenge on the right guy, because we, we were going to execute that guy anyways. Nice. 
Yeah, I mean, if it went on the armor smith, you actually had to try. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you actually had to pay attention <laughs> to what you were to, doing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, this looks a lot. This is this looks a lot like the old patron, uh, just based on the plays that have been lined up since the beginning. Um, I, I think I like, like rotting here. Yeah, why not? If you're gonna execute anyway. Yeah. There we go. I like this. Bing, bang, execute. Got him. Okay. And more patrons. There you go. Uh, yeah, I mean you're still uh, immune to concentration yeah. for the time being. Patrons dead, Ellie Google. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's not, it's not right. Everybody screamed. Like, I think everybody was upset about the war song change more so than the fact that Patron was dead. Yeah. Because um, the card itself was always okay. Uh, it's just that nobody had been, like, seeing it without yeah. the whole war song. The whole thing. 70 damage in one turn. Right. Yeah. So everybody was upset about the war song change rather than the, the Patron deck just going away. But yeah, like, Patron's dead, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Guess my career's over. Oh no! Oh man, Zelay's only deck. You could be a doctor. Is that is that your crush? I could be a doctor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! All right, Aldor Argus. Yeah, I mean, uh, you get to kill one of the, the very it's healthy best, patrons. That's the best he's got. And, yeah, but the problem is, as soon as you're three three, like the the taunted up Argus, uh, or Aldor, Aldor, Aldor is dead. You could Aldor, Aldor too. Um, does that do? Much? I mean, you could Aldor the three threes. Why not? And then it does. Kind of accomplishes yeah. the same I mean, thing, though. Yeah. It's <laughs> Aldor the Frothing. Oh, wait. <laughs> Paladin really struggles to beat this kind of circumstance from Warrior. Like, there's all those cards in hand, and you can't actually beat the board. Even if you could somehow actually beat the board. Like, okay, you find an equality that's somehow in your deck, and, uh, and you deal with the board because you oh, draw wow. equality into Consecration. And then the Warrior still has all these cards in hand. And yeah. You're not going to be able to deal with that reload. Well, uh, now, Oskaka... Is it going to be able to get himself another patron if he wants it? Because why not? You need to trade the what the five one away, the three one away, then you pop the Argus with the three three. This frothing's going to do work. He's getting yeah, he can get even more stuff. Oh god, getting real frothy. Oh on him. my, oh, that, is that lethal? No, There's no way. But next turn he has death. He has death by second charge into Grom. Into Grom, so. yeah. Where he's guaranteed to get an extra ten. Doctor yeah. Eight is not going to be enough. Yeah. So I won six games in a row with Patron yesterday. I don't know if you know. And uh, six games in a row. Very impressive. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty funny. And uh, one of the games I played against Shaman, I go like Frothing, Lotheb, and uh, Dread Corsair to taunt up on turn eight, and then on turn nine I hit him for thirty something. Just killed him. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about like Shaman is pretty defenseless. Well played. Yeah. I mean, you're preying on the on the weak. Yeah. All right. So as Kaka does not get swept here, two and one now in favor of Elki, and uh, he's got Patron to go up against a Mage. Which could work. I out. believe he's playing tempo mage, uh, but, right? Yeah, but it is not. Uh, yeah, freeze mage. So he doesn't have as big an edge as uh, yeah. he otherwise would. In fact, to the point where it might be just very difficult. Like, what do you think about that matchup, like the, the tempo mage versus patron? Uh, I'd rather be the patron side of things. Um, All right, that bad. I'd agree with that. Well, it's not like a huge. I mean, it's, you can win or lose, but yeah. uh, early weapons are going to be really important for the warrior to deal with the mage stuff, and early mana worm is really important on the mage side. They'll try and push enough damage to kill him. Uh, obviously, eventually the patron player wins if he doesn't die, but that's a big if if he doesn't die, he could very easily die. Yeah, yeah like mana worm openers, you don't have a war axe. Well, you know, rest in peace sometimes. It doesn't take that much. And here we see no weapon for the warrior. Yeah, that's but a pretty big deal. There's no two draw. I mean, the unstable portal, I think, uh, was thrown. Uh, I mean, it was, uh, was kept, but the spell slinger was thrown back. So yep. he's missing out on one of those, you know, essential early game minions. Mm -hmm. uh, but he was looking for scientists. He was probably looking for the mana worms. Yep, I agree with that moment. Yeah. I thought it was good. Definitely good. So unstable ghoul on two is, you know, oh. you got to play for the now. Like, Sometimes you think about saving Unstable Ghoul because it's such a good answer for Mirror Entity, like giving them a Unstable Ghoul is sort of a liability for them. Yeah. Like not just dealing with it for free, you're actually dealing with, that, dealing with it while helping yourself, but um, you got to play for now, right? Kazan missed Kazan oh. missed it. Yeah. That's the wrong side of the board, yeah, ladies. I wish Oskaka had that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This ghoul is good. Yeah. This Gives ghoul is good. Two draws from the Acolyte. Oh, wow. Possibly three. Yeah, I mean, this is the best turn you're going to get to play the Kazan as a tempo tool. And if you haven't seen a weapon on the Mana Worm, if there's no death by it, you're going to at least be able to use it uh, effectively. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is getting painful for the Warrior. He's yeah. up the board here. Oh, man. That no weapon is for the Corsair. Clunky. Not a good draw. Very clunky. I mean, you could play the other Acolyte. Death by... No. 
it's good right, though. You can, act, you can act like whirlwind if you want. And yeah. Then set up. Uh, yeah. A world in which he has to kill the acolyte with drawing more cards is never a bad idea. Yeah, acolyte whirlwind's got to be the play. Just... Or just oh, just playing defensive. Mm. Okay. All right. Well, I'm not the world champion. <laughs> He is. Oh he my is god. Another e -sportal. Let's see what he gets. Another Kazan. Oh no. my uh. <laughs> Here they beat dragons. Oh no. Two drakes and the lord of the blue drakes. You see a 12 damage or 11 damage fireball this game? Yeah, oh I think uh, Oskaka. I, you know what's funny is Elki said, I'm playing Tempo Mage with cards like Spell Slinger and Unstable Portal to bridge the gap. Yeah. Because I don't like, I might get RNG. things they don't expect. That makes and if a lot they of sense, know, man. If they know what I'm playing, they'll probably beat me. But if I can come with unexpected cards that they can't possibly play around, then I'll be able to win. Uh, some that makes games. a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, he's as you said, he's very realistic about it, right? He's not like making stuff up. It's interesting. The Drawing way more cards. It. God, I hope he's playing Ronin to go with that Malagos. <laughs> just triple arcane misses. <laughs> That's, oh man! Um, so, just just so, for the just so that's for the effect, twenty-four defect. missiles. Wait, no. It's uh, three plus five. Yeah, twenty-four. Yeah, twenty-four missiles. Well, usually, three usually mana. terrible at math. Wow, I did it. You used to be terrible at math. Yes, three times eight. I know I'm Asian, but that, that's the stigma is not true. Trust me. Not with my yeah. grades. Jeez, depends where you come from. Come from the streets. Yeah. See. So okay. what are we doing here? That three-two <laughs> acolyte is pretty awkward. Yeah, I mean, I was looking at this. If you ping, you lose too much tempo. If you play the Drake, you have to sacrifice a 4-3 into it. You might find an answer by drawing first. I like this trade. Step one, draw a card, see what happens. Oh, oh my god. All right. Does that change what we're doing at all? Um, it's good with Malagos later. Yeah, mm -hmm. I guess. I mean, you could keep it for burn. With Malagos, you have all the incentive in the world to... Oh, goodness. There's a lot of big ones. Just go phase, find the Frost Bolts, play Malagos win. Is that, is that the line of play? Whoa, that's going to be scary. There we go. Oh my wow, god. Wow, this turn is disgusting. Very good turn here that's for Oskaka. Uh, he did that real fast too. Time. That APM. Yeah, yeah, but he's a perfect clear and there's no AOE right now. Uh, in before, he finds, you know, Arcan Explosion and just goes Malagos. <laughs> now what if he drew an Inner Rage off that Acolyte, or did he already use two? Oh my god. Like, would he have wanted to? I believe he used one Inner Rage so what, far. Yeah. Actually, not quite sure. Well, the spell slinger could give an Malagos? AOE, bo like uh, a board swipe. Play the Malagos. A board wipe that nah, is. I get wrecked by execute. What are you looking for with spell slinger? Any know. like flame strike, I guess. For flame next strike round. is good. Yeah. Um, Arcane explosion is okay, but you're gonna be one turn too late to play Malagos. It would have been cool if he e portal into a Doomsayer and then spell slingered into a Frost Nova. <laughs> oh my God, that would have been really sick. I think that might have made the game. Wanted. And he's gonna uh. look for an answer. Cone of cold with Malagos. That's really it's like expensive. Dead. Yeah. Turn ten is a ways away. Yeah. Yeah. But it will. Uh, it will let you stop those patrons for one turn. Do you think that ping uh, indicates he doesn't have flame strike in his deck? Yes. Might have played, Ar played arcane and electric for flame strike so if he had it. Yeah. I mean, uh, do you have more chances of finding it in your deck? Of course. Like if you if you just use arcane it. That's a pretty hefty board. Yeah. But oh, you're not going to make patrons replicate at least if you freeze some. So. There's one upside. You can like Kona Cold on the far right and then ping the 3 1 in the middle. So we found a spot where Dr. But Boom's not good on 7. Oh, no, wow. That's right. Inconceivable. Yeah. You're, gonna be, you're pretty dead. You, you can't even cast slinger. spells. Yeah, spell slinger. Yeah, with Lothem on For the board. Something. Oh, yeah. with Lothem. Oh. <laughs> you can't even oh. cast anything you find. Oh, not even a prep. <laughs> you can't even cast a prep. Yeah. Oh, I hate Lothem. So you play rogue. That's your fault. Yeah, that's, that's exactly why. You put yourself in that spot, mm -hmm. sir. If we frost uh, got, below got... Feb, uh, go to two on board, right? Honestly, though, unless he's playing flame strike, I don't see a way. Uh, Judging to... by the Ragnaros, I don't think he's playing flame strike. That's too many. Uh, yeah, too many big, big drops cards. for the tempo mage. I mean, oh. I mean Oskaka could pick this up. Um, the he has, warlock he has from lethal on board, right? Like, right. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, if Lothab doesn't get dies. stopped, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, and the checkmate's calls. Oskaka's gonna go, you know, possibly get a reverse sweep on Elki. Yeah. Uh, he started off, you know, 2 0, and then uh, Oskaka's able to go back 2 2, and he's got a Warlock left. I haven't seen the Warlock in the last uh, series he did against, Rec uh, against Recful. Yeah. So, we don't know whether or not it's a handlock or mid range demon lock. But based on what you've been saying earlier, I would expect Zoo out of him, right? right. Yeah, I think, uh, I think he is a Double Bane of Doom. And Zeus should be he's, he's quite a bit Zeus less effective against Patron than uh, the yeah. Handlock would be. Exactly. 
So it's going to be, I mean, Oscar is also a very good player, so he knows uh, what to play around. Uh, if he's got any knowledge about what Elk he's bringing, then he knows what to mulligan for. Like, he knows there's not going to be handlock. Uh, I, I don't know. We'll have to see. So Zuz looking for that flame imp. Gets some pressure going. And, and he patrons. finds it. Oh, oh God. The squire start. is very good against uh, the be beginning of a, of a game against Warrior, if you can yeah. get it buffed up at all. It suffers against Armor Smith and Unstable a little bit, but it's really good against Fiery War X yeah. and maybe Taskmaster. Oh, warriors for the patron weapons for the patron player. That's. Uh, that's I mean, it's kind him. of a good card. <clears throat> Fire War Act is kind of a good card. Yeah, so it's Despite. It's, it's gonna be tough. So, to um, yes. There's no match, by the way, guys. Um, it's gonna be us all game. Oh, there we go. Oh. Coin. Eh, do you coin axe? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's do it. Uh, I mean, you see a flame imp, your like, first reflex is, please, please. Yeah, you always do it. Like, the threat of him playing another minion next turn and you not having already killed the first one, you're taking just too much repetitive With damage. With Voidwalker true, especially, true, it gets true. so frustrating. If there's like a turn two that looks like a Voidwalker plus Arden Squire, let's say, mm -hmm. then your, your War Axe just gets completely negated. Yeah. So you just, you just can't take the risk of Zoo snowballing minions. You've got to get those weapons chopping away immediately. Also, you give, you give yourself outs to draw another two drop next turn and have like an ideal curve. Right, and, two and, and you're two also and deterring. Uh, you know, you're deterring them from playing what they usually would like to play on turn two, right? What they they're going to opt for maybe yeah. one drops, so they're going to play off curve. And wow. if they don't want to play a juggler into this, they life tap. And if they life tap, then that slows them down. I was going to disagree with you, but you're just completely right. You would have played juggler if there weren't a fire right, war exactly. Play. <laughs> <laughs> Very often, the war axe is just kind of a deterrent. So, flood that board. Juggler abusive, just to push that one one ninth damage in. Yeah, it might be necessary at some point. Oh yeah, every uh, every bit matters. So he's never so he's n can't be one off lethal later. He's got a pretty good board, though. I mean, Askaka with the double frothing. I mean, this is, this is as tempo heavy a hand as you can get, I think, as a, as a patron warrior in a case like this, where you have a three drop, you have a four drop, you've got a death by it when necessary. So you've got like all the answers all across the board. So whenever he wants to have something, he's gonna be able to very easily. And the zoo will have to life tap sooner than later, mm -hmm. and that's gonna slow them down like on that turn where you can put down a shredder. I like that inner rage for tempo there. He's not saving it because he doesn't have anything like a patron in hand. Right. Yeah. I mean, and the sooner he can clear, clear the board, the better, right? Yeah. Like, he's going to win if he can just not die for right. a while. Oh, that's a great card, but... Hoot hoot. Do you kill the Acolyte? Maybe not. Because, I mean, the Owl basically lets the Acolyte still get a two for one. Yeah. Just by trading. He wants to save the Owl for, like, a frothing or a patron or something more threatening, right? Well, I, I like using Owl on Acolyte. It's just I don't like leaving the one three behind. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Wow. And this is, the, this is kind of the, the shredder turn. over Despite. Saves the Enerage this time. Yep. He's not feeling as threatened anymore. Owl and Defender would be good to trade away the 2-1. Um, unfortunately, if That's you play six. the Owl, you have to sacrifice your two minions. So you might go Owl, Voidwalker, and then you tap. Well, you tap, tap first, first yeah. ideally. Yeah, but, mm -hmm. um, that way you get yourself an extra card in the only turn where you're probably going to get to do it if, you're, if you hope to curve. I might just void Walker Argus and hit him in the face. Yeah, straight up. You, you just buff up the... I was thinking about that, too. Yeah. The Squire. That seems good. Yeah, I mean, the 3-2. Spend all five minutes developing. Trading the Shredder Good feels bad. Him. So just hit him in the face. Let him figure it out. Yeah, but he is... I guess taking the three damage would hurt a little bit. Because um, if you trade the Shredder into the void Walker, that's a free kill. Yeah, that feels good. Oh, man. You're going to do that, and then what? Do you Despite? Do you Lothab? Probably Despite now. You have to play weapons, I think. Um, okay. The one damage AoE might come in really handy. Doomguard top deck. We have a really be sick turn six. six. Yeah, works. double frothing with Despite clearing the board. Wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, now Ooh. that's a card. You can play on deal, curve dude. and then get the Shredder out of the way. That's insane. This might go really badly for Oskaka. Sometimes you just don't give him credit for having the Malganus in their hand. Yeah, right? where's yeah. the execute? You know, like if you don't have the execute exactly. for Malganus, that's essentially uh, unless you're threatening counter lethal. At the same time, one frothing should be able to trade into the Malganus, though. Just not in the same turn. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna be taking an extra nine. So talents. Void so, Void call really is really solid. Yeah, okay. It's just such, such a had to good be the best top deck. Draw. Yeah, it had to be the absolute best draw. I mean, Doomguard is just not good enough. 
So do we go frothing, frothing, hit something with our despite? I don't think you hit the void caller, right? I'd Good. be scared. I mean, yeah. if you go double frothing, I might just go for the... Because then Malganus can attack the yeah. next turn immediately. Whereas if you do it like this, then one of your frothings stays up. Yeah. Um, okay. And even if he gets Malganus, then your other frothing takes the It makes sense because trade. as a patron, you're feeling like you're in a strong position here, so you want to avoid taking the risk of giving him a, a good demon off Void Caller right yeah. off the bat. Yeah. Start giving it charge. You don't want to charge Malganus in your own face. Getting frothy. I was going to say, Doom Guard would be weird. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. If you that might have been a risky tap. Cause I was going to say, yeah, yeah, if you, you drew a did, demon. Exactly. Right. Did you drew a Flame Imp. Oh, like, um, are you ever not trading? 14 yeah. damage coming up. A Whirlwind would mean that if you flood the board, you're getting punished. You have seen no Whirlwinds yet. All you've seen is the like one Inner Rage. Mm -hmm. um, so here we have no options, I don't think. We yeah. Just, yeah, we just flare stuff and trade our guy in. So we got a we unless, a turtle. unless you just face and was then that? did he just go? I think he went face. Did he just go face? He nah. went face for three damage. I swear oh he did. Oh my god, he went face. And uh, the right now, on this guy. But is it working? Because he's gonna go up to 10, 17. He's got, he has eighteen damage. Actually, he's got twenty-two. One off. One off he's lethal. One. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. The memes. Unreal. Well, okay. When you're one off, what you want to do is set up lethal for the next turn while being as defensive as possible. Yep. So how do we do that? Is this involve Lothab? Um, you could play Death Spite set up for Grom as well. Death Spite set up for Grom, but... Um, okay. If we like Lothab, hero power up to 10, and hit him in the face for 14, for instance. He, we're at 10, he has 4 showing, he needs 6 out of hand to kill us. It has to be PO, Doomguard, or... Like, it, it has, has to, to be a mix under of... Lothab, right? uh, no, exactly, you can't play yeah. both, okay. so... Yeah, I like, I, like, I like that Lothab armor up play. But uh, something like Doomguard plus Direwolf for abusive. We've seen at Would least go, one abusive, maybe two already. We've seen two abusives. We haven't seen a single Direwolf. Okay. Um, so there's the possibility that you can dodge the lethal from that way. Would you ever just inner rage one of your... Like, you okay. have to just push the damage here with the... Uh, goes in your line here. Would you have inner rage to put push even two more damage? It's actually f uh, th four damage in this case. Probably not, because... Yeah. Four more damage. I'm setting up lethal either way. The inner rage is useful with Gromash. Unbelievable, Ooh. but the problem is, what do you get from that Void Caller? What does the Void Caller get, get you? He has right? If it gets Doomguard, then he can't play Mon you, you could play Doomguard straight up just to get rid of uh, the second. Uh, like, you have to just play from hand. But the you problem is you lose Malganus and then so you're... Pro you're no, but you're able to double trade is what I mean. Like, you don't get anything from the Void Caller. But you're able to guarantee that you live. Nah, but you're behind here. You take the 50-50. You gotta, gotta go low, right? I guess. All right. Oh, looks like you got Malganus because Doomguard is green. Uh, green from attacking, oh. maybe. Oh. Yep, there it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's Not green bad. like you can actually attack from right. the hand. Um, so he's dead. I mean, he's dead, yeah. He's a tap. He's um, a tap into something. I mean, you could tap into defense of Argus. Argus. That would really, really help. Oh, my oh, God. No, that no I can't them. play it. You can't play Malganus for five mana. It's actually ten. Oh man. Poor. Almost. Never the lucky. Reverse sweep is all I have to say no. here. World champion. Patrons Zero get back. percent chance to lose. He Very said. Well, well done. Let's give him some room to give him a good interview. No, we already interviewed him earlier. Oh. Well, I mean, wait. You know what? You can do the interview. I, I know he's. I don't uh, have any. Questions. He's probably tired to be interviewed, but you know, let's bring him on the couch. Okay. He's gonna try to dodge us. We're gonna have to grab him over. All right. I can already see it. He's like, oh, again? They're going to talk to me? <laughs> Didn't I just do enough of that? Oh, like, man. Rough life winning all the time. I know. Yeah. Life's like really terrible. The Poor handshake. Oskaka. Very good handshake. Good sportsmanship. Like all right. That. We'll sit down next to Ryzen. Um, Oskaka, congratulations. How do you feel? I, that was really sick. Like, that was super close at the end. Were you sweating when he, when he had the first 2-0? Uh, Were you... That's yeah, yeah, I was like actually bit. really nervous because the Secret yeah. Paladin is actually quite strong, even against the new Patron Warrior, so I think I got pretty lucky within the last three games, but uh, he also had some pretty good starts in like the first two games, so, mm -hmm. uh, you know, kind of went both ways, but yeah, I mean, that was really, really close, and I'm really impressed by Elki. You never saw it, but Unstable Portal gave him a Malagos. Um, oh, yeah. And oh, okay. we, 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 we thought the game might last long enough to where it would be relevant, but it never uh, came up. Yeah, I drew like the patron nuts with the Enrage Roll one. So right, exactly. So everything much. just went out of control and he had no way to clear the board. Mm -hmm. I was also really, really nervous in the very last moment because of like double Doom Guard. I was thinking if I should like maybe like kill the Void Caller first, but I think I would lose too much if I do that. Yeah. Um, 
So I thought the card was Malganis. Oh, yeah, okay. he had Malganis in hand. He went face with his 3-3 three, three instead of trading to your like 7-3 Frothing Berserker. Yes. Oh. He was really aggressive. Yeah. yeah. That's, Maybe he was yeah, trying to like really bluff you into trading into it or something. I thought he didn't have anything at yeah. that point. Yeah, nobody he, respects he it. Represented that I was very scared well. that he right. would draw Doomguard right? Doom into Doomguard and get exactly full that way. But yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm really, really impressed by his play, actually. So, uh, no, yeah, he, he, he definitely played well. You said uh, there was like a 0% chance of losing. It came pretty close, I find, but you, you pulled, you pulled, you pulled it out, man. So uh, even, though, even though... Uh, Going into the group, I was pretty confident, but... After I'm this? Like, yeah, after this, I'm actually quite impressed by Elki's play, so yeah. maybe I underestimated him, and I obviously wish him good luck in the next match. Yeah, okay. well, uh, I hope uh, he ends up maybe making it a top two. He's gonna, he's got another match to play, I think, in the group against uh, Lothar, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Um, so we'll see how that goes. That being said, congratulations. We'll be uh, seeing you in the playoffs. I think. Right, cool, thanks. Yeah. All right. Take care. We will be right back. Yep, take a short break, and then right. we'll have the uh, another match of, in the same group as well. Uh, should be pretty cool. So uh, you're watching Seed Story Cup 4. Stay tuned.